this computer. Okay, so we are now recording. Uh, so uh, today's session is gonna be really just kind of an overview to um, the Moodle course, uh, the Moodle environment. We'll talk a little bit about what Moodle courses look like, uh, go through some points about um, some of the basic uh, setup that uh, you'll probably want to think about. If you've never used Moodle before, it'll be a good way to get an idea of how Moodle courses are, are laid out. And, uh, and as I said, um, as we go forward through the week, uh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to have a workshop that's really about uh, adding various kinds of content to your course. <laughs> Wednesday is uh, kind of a, it has to be a brief overview to um, some of the main learning activities, assignments, quizzes, um, discussion forums. You know, each of those could be an extended workshop topic in and of themselves. So again, that will be kind of a high level overview. Uh, doing assessments, uh, grading assignments, setting up your grade book will be what we talk about on Thursday. And then there are a variety of administrative tools uh, that a lot of faculty don't use in terms of conditional release of materials and comp uh, completion tracking and using competencies and various reports and so forth that I want to talk about on Friday as well as, you know, talk a little bit about um, some aspects of both synchronous and asynchronous delivery of your courses uh, through Moodle and or Zoom on Friday. Uh, I will say that most of these topics we're going to be talking about today I have kind of connected into a certificate course that we've developed on Moodle. So let me go ahead and pop that open right now. Um, this is kind of a self-paced course. Um, I don't know, sometime this last year I thought, well, if I were starting with a blank course space, what were the kinds of things that I would do to get it ready? And can I demonstrate those in a self-paced, uh, self-directed course uh, for faculty? So uh, you've all, I've all, I've enrolled you all as participants in this course. So you can go in here anytime you want. The I've got um, you know um, information including uh, screen captures of how to go about doing some of these setups that I'm talking about. And the course covers uh, things like um, determining what kind of format and organization you want for your Moodle course, uh, using the attendance function, managing course communication. So today we're really kind of talking about course formats, organizations, and communications. And um, after the course, uh, I'll direct you to, you know, um, work on your own courses for the fall and then report back through these activities on course formats and on communications. And I'll use that then to report back to, um, well, I actually use that to give you a badge for today's workshop, which you can then use to report back to academic affairs, providing content, learning activities, middle grade book and so forth. So, um, as I say, a lot of uh, what we'll be talking about over this week will be tied into that. Um, as I did mention earlier before maybe some of you arrived, uh, I mean, these workshops this week are really just kind of on basic use of Moodle and the tools we're then. I'm gonna be launching a whole series of course design workshops starting next week and there'll be many offerings of this going into um, July that will help you help all of us think about what's the best balance of asynchronous and synchronous course designs for a course in the fall. Many of us are teaching remotely. A few of us are actually teaching online. Some of us are teaching face-to-face. -face. So this um, course design workshop that I'm will be launching will help um, help us uh, help us all design courses that have an appropriate balance of am I meeting face to face with my students, my remote students? Uh, if so, what do I know what to do in there? What are the learning activities that I can push off to asynchronous mode so that when we get together, 
we can focus on the best kind of use of our synchronous time, maybe even trade off some of that synchronous time for asynchronous activities so that, um, you know, we're not just stuck in hour after hour after hour of a Zoom classroom. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're doing today and through the rest of the week. Uh, again, if there are any comments or questions, put them into the chat. And Marie, please just break in if there's something I need to um, need to address. Uh, okay, so a lot of you mentioned that you're completely new to Moodle. Um, at least you'd all logged in so that I could find your account on Moodle to um, to add you to that Moodle Foundation certificate course. What I want to do is spend a little bit of time just talking about the Moodle front page um, and some things there. Then we'll go into what a course looks like and what some of your options are for setting different formats and organizing the overall structure of your course before finishing off with some comments about uh, some basic communication tools. So, uh, Moodle. There are links to Moodle uh, in a variety of different places over the college website. If you go to the faculty staff portal page, there's a link to Moodle there. The library has a link to Moodle. I just go to my browser and type in moodle.purchase.edu. Actually, I just go to my browser, type in M, and the rest gets autofilled. Uh, if you've not spent a lot of time on the front page of Moodle, though, actually, let me, let me log out. Um, so, I mean, here is uh, the basic Moodle uh, front page. If you go to moodle.purchase.edu, you'll be taken to the actual directory where the Moodle application is. You've got, um, we've made the front page fairly simplified. We have some links on it for students and faculty. Marie and I used to try to develop a much more complicated, information-rich uh, front page for Moodle, and we got the feeling that no one really ever kind of looked at any of it, so we've kind of pared it down. Uh, I'll point out a couple of these things. Uh, in terms of logging in, there is, on the upper right-hand corner of your Moodle pages, there's always going to be um, tools for you to manage your account, basically. So. I could click here to log in. We've also put this nice big orange button on the front page of Moodle to log in. And uh, once you're logged in, the page changes a little bit. Um, what were some of the things that I wanted to specifically point out here? So I already mentioned a little bit the student and the faculty links. Let me just highlight a couple of links here. We have uh, a variety of self-help materials, uh, the Moodle Basics Guide and the Moodle Beyond Basics Guide. If you have a question about how to do, many of the questions that we receive about doing X, Y, or Z, I mean, we've, we've uh, put together help materials for that. So the Moodle Basics Guide, you know, has a whole set of uh, help materials on, um, making your courses available, hiding them, uh, using different course formats, adding weeks or topics, deleting weeks or topics, importing your course from one semester to another, uh, working with participants, say you wanted to add your uh, library liaison, we've got material on Ally, we've got some basic information about adding activities, uploading, working with files, etc. So, uh, if you're not familiar with the Moodle Basics Guide, uh, it's available there right as a link on the front page. Moodle Beyond Basics goes into some things like Turnitin, how to work with a gradebook, uh, using VoiceThread, Zoom, Live Classroom kind of things, and so forth. Um, so there are a couple of options there. Um, We've got a link to the Moodle Foundation certificate course. You should also see the Moodle Foundations, um, the, the link to that course now that you're enrolled in it under workshops and faculty development. 
and under certificates, here's a link to the Moodle Foundations course. Uh, some links for managing uh, um, senior projects. Um, these links will leave once we move to a new Moodle server and we're handling senior projects outside of Moodle, but for now they're there. Same thing for uh, students having a link to get their project set up. I will point out that across the top of the page, there are these drop down menus that um, I think get overlooked a lot. Uh, there are a variety of links from um, dealing with TLTC resources and help materials. Same thing for the library. Students, we have tried to link in various resources that we think would be useful to students. There's material on accessibility and so forth. So um, just a couple more points here, and then maybe I'll take a break to see if there are some questions. Um, there are a variety of blocks on the front page here. So uh, when Marie's logged in, um, you can actually uh, chat some questions. Oh, sorry, Marie is not online. Uh, but uh, we have a, a chat widget. We've got a main menu here that has a lot of useful links. Um, and just a couple of other uh, points here. Um, you should, when you are navigating around Moodle, see a navigation block and an administration block, although you may not see the administration block on the front page, but you'll definitely see the administration block in your courses. Uh, these are important uh, aids in getting around um, Moodle. And when we get into looking at courses, we'll go into the course administration block in more detail and look at some of the uh, options that are available there. Under navigation, I just wanted, uh, well, before I talk about that, we have for years and years relied on a custom piece of code that uh, Paul, who's on the call, developed for us, uh, which provides this uh, categorized access to courses. So when you're logged into Moodle and you've got your fall courses there, you should see, um, if you expand that fall 2020 category, you should see the uh, fall courses that you are signed up for or signed up to be the instructor on. They're currently grayed out because the courses at this point are not open to students, but you can certainly get in and we'll be going here to take a look at fall courses in a minute. Once we are able to move to a new Moodle server, a brand new Moodle cluster, we have plans to get rid of this categorized course list because it is custom code that we don't have a way to maintain anymore and switch over instead to the built-in dashboard. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes to, to show you that now. It's available under the navigation menu, the navigation block. Click on dashboard, you'll see a uh, section where there is a course overview, there's a recently accessed courses, there is a timeline that will pull up for you or for students on their timeline, they can see what are all of the things that are coming up across their courses. So this is a good way to get a, for students in particular, to get a sense of, okay, what's coming up across my Moodle courses in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, Moodle has a badging system, which we haven't used a lot, but if you decide you want to award badges to your students for work in your courses, we can talk about that. In the course overview, you can say, well, what courses do I want to provide an overview of? I've set it here to be looking at my future courses. So I've got uh, Search for Life and Universe coming up this fall shows that it's hidden. And I've got a couple of sandboxes that have a start date that I've, I've pegged to the fall that are also showing up here. We're currently not pushing the dashboard a lot because we've had this Moodle server up for like eight or nine years and it's just chock full of 
semester after semester of courses. And so it's pretty cluttered. If, if any of us, you know, clicked to look at all of our courses, uh, you know, it would be just a big long um, list of courses. But um, when we do in the winter slash spring move over to a brand new Moodle server, it'll be much cleaner and we'll be trying to promote um, um, faculty and staff using the dashboard to, to navigate and get to their courses. Uh, you, can, uh, you can display a summary of the courses here. You can display courses by cards. And so here I've got my, again, my three upcoming courses or just a list of courses. If there were completion tracking turned on uh, and a student was looking at the course in the course overview, uh, they'd be able to see what percentage of the um, tracked activities that they had completed right here from their dashboard under the course overview. So again, this is, you're just getting a little bit of a heads up. Uh, we'll be trying to promote the use of the dashboard more as we go forward. Finally, uh, also under the navigation, there are a variety of site pages. Uh, this provides the same kind of access to the main menu links. Um, so if you are searching for textbooks or wanting to get to your dashboard or wanting to get to that Moodle Basics, um, you can click on them here. Okay. So Marie, how are we doing? Uh, any comments, questions in the chat? Nope, everything's good for right now. Great, okay. So um, for those of you who haven't used Moodle a lot, uh, what I want to do now is to um, just go in to take a look at what the fall courses look like uh, to give you a basic idea of um, how courses are organized in Moodle and then uh, what some of your options are and then we'll go into a couple of other topics. So um, I'll just go into my search for life in the universe class. Well, let me actually go into a course that hasn't had anything um, done to it yet. So I'm kind of guessing that, yep, here's a course, uh, Abnormal Psych, CRN 45064. Um, by default, Moodle courses are set up in this kind of weekly format. So the front page of your Moodle course, unless you change it, is essentially a series of sections where you can put a variety of descriptions and resources and activities uh, that are pegged to that week. And that might be the best way to organize your course. It's certainly a default way that a lot of faculty use, but it may not necessarily be the best way. So let me, um, uh, and then, um, yeah, I think we can, uh, look at the course administration, look at the administration block now that we're in a course. Uh, if you, you may have the course administration block constantly popped out. I like to have them docked along the side here so that they're not taking up space, but then when I want to get in, I can just roll over. There are, uh, you have the ability to edit a few settings on your course. You can turn editing on from here, uh, or you can turn editing on using this button here. You can um, go to set up your grade book. We'll look at this on Thursday. You can see who your enrolled users are, and I won't actually pop up the enrolled users on this course uh, since um, this is being recorded. Um, you have various reports that we'll talk about on Friday. You can uh, you know, set up other, other things here. So actually, let me do go into my fall course. I haven't really done much with my fall course yet at this point, but um, 
I have added some things to this uh, week zero slash topic zero area at the top. So we'll talk about this in a minute, uh, what your options are be besides having these sections show up as weeks. But there's always going to be an area at the top of the Moodle page where you will want to stick things that aren't attached to a particular section of the uh, schedule for the for your Moodle course. So if there was something, if I were going to use the weekly format and there was some material I wanted my students to read during the week of September 21st, obviously I would upload those materials into this week and we'll look at how to do that in tomorrow's workshop. But if I were going to put the syllabus up, I mean, the syllabus is not just uh, uh, applicable to September 14th to September 20th. So I would put the syllabus up in this week zero area. I've got a couple of other things here. I'm planning to use some Zoom sessions for my online course in the fall. And so I have added the Zoom dashboard activity. And uh, again, that's not going to be restricted to any given week. So I've, I've put that up into this week zero area. We have a new online tutoring um, service um, for math, science, statistics, and also writing. Again, I'm going to have a number of non-majors who are going to have trouble with science topics in my Search for Life and Universe course. So I've got a link here to that tutoring service. I'm going to have um, a, a library of materials that I want the students to work together to annotate. So again, I've got that link there. You know, again, syllabus, uh, if you have um, you know, a, uh, you know, other kinds of course policies that aren't in the syllabus but apply to the whole course, any of those kinds of things uh, are, are, would be good candidates for coming up here in the week zero area. Okay. Showing how many courses. Uh, just quickly, if you do go into the, your administration block when you are looking at your course, you can click Edit Settings. And many of these settings are locked down because they uh, are important for the course to be able to talk back and forth with Banner to you know, control enrollments and so forth. But if you did need to adjust the name of your course, you could do that. If you wanted to add a short description of your course, you could add that there. If you wanted to upload a course image, you could do that there. Uh, a couple of other things here. Um, you can determine whether or not to show the gradebook to students. The default is yes. You can determine whether or not you want to enable completion tracking. Um, and some other th settings like that. There are a lot of settings here under course format, but we're going to talk about that uh, in just a minute. You might, as we get more and more students and, and faculty users using the dashboard, you might want to put in a short um, course summary and uh, course image because if I look here into the dashboard, that uh, course description and course image that shows up here in this course overview are the summary and image that I've added to my course through the course settings. Um, one thing you don't want to do is copy your whole syllabus into the course summary, which we have seen happen in the past because then on this course overview, the summary for the course would be the whole course syllabus and students who are looking at your course uh, from their dashboard page will probably not appreciate that. Okay, so I'm just gonna cancel out of this because I really don't wanna change anything at this point. So um, just, as I said, um, many faculty 
just leave this default weekly organization for the Moodle courses. Uh, for many courses, it's going to work quite well. Um, you've got things pegged for students to read or f uh, assignments for them to do or for discussions or quizzes for them to participate in tagged to particular weeks. You're not limited to this option though. So let me just uh, show you a couple of other examples. So uh, if we look at my geology class from this last fall, I actually did not set it up in a weekly format, but for my course, um, I had a section, a module, uh, what, however you want to phrase it, a topic that deals with some various foundational concepts. And then I had th the course broken down into three basic sections. First was, you know, what are the earth materials that the, my students need to know? I mean, we, we have minerals making up rocks and igneous uh, rocks and sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks. So there's going to be a unit or a section or a module, whatever you want to call it, that was uh, earth materials. And that was going to last for about four weeks. Then we went into a unit on internal processes for about three weeks, how the earth formed, plate tectonics, earthquakes, and so forth, and then finish off with the class with another unit on surface processes, which was also about three weeks. Okay. So your, your Moodle courses do not have to be restricted to just being a weekly schedule on the front page of Moodle. You can organize your course into units, modules, whatever you want to call them, and then use uh, labels um, within those different topics to provide organization. If we look at my Search for Life in the Universe course from a while back, a couple summers ago, it's also organized under this uh, topics format, but rather than having, you can see that I've got these topics and then everything that is uh, within that topic is just displayed out on the front page, which is nice. It makes it easy for students to find everything that um, is gonna be um, coming their way, but it does make for a very, very long web page. And so you can uh, also break up into topics, but rather than having uh, every topic fully displayed on the front page, the front page becomes basically just a kind of like a table of contents. And so for my Life in the Universe class, again, I've kind of broken it up into three units. Uh, what do we know about life uh, as we know it from the Earth? Uh, how are we searching for life in our solar system? How are we searching for life beyond our solar system? And you can see that this first unit on life as we know it, here's the kind of summary description. And here are all the different kinds of, I've got six quizzes in there, uh, six assignments, nine files, two discussion forums, one turn it in assignment. Students click on the link to that module, the link to that Moodle topic on the front page, they'll be taken to uh, a page that has just the materials for that, um, for that module all laid out. Okay, this just makes it a little bit, uh, makes it your front page of, of your Moodle course a little bit less lengthy by breaking your topics basically up into pages. Um, I have used weekly format in the past. I did, uh, used to do a first year seminar. And that was a course where it really made sense to, because we had a different topic every week. We met once a week and uh, each week was a different topic. And so having that weekly organization where I'm, and, and I'm dealing with freshmen, so having them kind of focused on what's our calendar, what's coming up this week, what's coming up next week, really kind of made sense. Okay. So um, in the course design workshops that we'll be start doing next week, we'll talk more about um, 
when and how you might want to organize your course into into various modules or units and and, um, and how how to make sure that the outcomes that you want your students to accomplish in each one of those units is um, you know tied back to the overall learning outcomes for the course so we'll have some opportunities to work through that in the course design um, workshop but um, I mean, generally, there are some um, pros and cons for the different kinds of organizations. Weekly is default. In many courses, it makes sense just to lay out the calendar weekly. One thing I like about topics organization is that it does provide you some flexibility. So that my Search for Life and Universe course, I have taught it as a three-week intensive accelerated online course in the winter semester. The winter term and I have taught it over a 15-week period by having it organized in those three topics you know life on earth looking for life in the solar system looking for life beyond the solar system I can use the same course design whether it's a three-week course or a 15-week course it's just that in the three-week course we've got one week for each of those units whereas for the 15-week course um, it's uh, I, you know basically have five weeks to go through each of those units in a more leisurely pace because you know students are also working on other courses so by organizing your course around topics or modules or units whatever you want to call it and organizing your Moodle course that way you're not tied into specific calendar dates and it makes it easier to repurpose your course from one uh, format to another okay so um, how do we actually do all of that? Well, uh, if you go, if I'm looking here now at my fall course, which is set up with this default uh, weekly format, um, if I go into edit settings and come down here under course format, you can see the default here is weekly format and the options the options that are really uh, applicable to um, course spaces are either I'm going to organize my course around weeks or I'm going to organize my course around topics uh, and if I do that I can display those topics in a couple different ways so if I change this to topics format then uh, click save and display now I've got a series of topics rather than weeks and if I turn editing on uh, I'm not going to have 15 topics I'm going to or 16 topics I'm going to have much fewer than that. I can start, um, you know, deleting topics from the bottom here and pare this down to the number of topics that I actually want to use for the course. And I won't take the time to do that in the workshop here because I'm, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to teach my course this fall around those three units that I've used in the past. Or I've got another framework that uses the Fermi equation that might actually, I might want to spread my course over seven uh, units. So you can delete topics, or if I were still in the weekly format, you could de delete weeks. You have the, uh, at the bottom here, the ability to if you've pruned too many, you, you change your mind and you want to go back, well, let me go actually go back to 16 topics. I can add two more topic sections at the bottom here or two more weeks at the bottom and I will have um, these spaces. And, and again, whether these are weeks or topics, each of them is a location where you can add activities or resources. And we'll look at that more tomorrow and Wednesday. Okay, uh, let me just go back into edit settings and to go under course format. And um, 
leave it at topics format, but you've got here uh, a couple of options. We won't talk a lot about how to handle hidden sections, but you can actually, you can develop your course materials. You can have the whole semester laid out and you can actually hide whole sections at a time and then just open them up to students at the time when you want students to be able to look at what's in that, that week or that topic. Um, and your options are for students, for those hidden sections to be either completely invisible or for students to see that, oh, there's a, you know, there's a topic eight here, but I just can't see what it is. That's what those options are. The course layout gives you the option of showing all sections on one page, which is the, you know, kind of default Moodle scroll of death. Let's have a long, long course uh, page here versus showing one section per page. And if I select that option, then um, each of these topic names become essentially a link to a page for that topic. And so if I could type in life as we know it and hit return and edit that topic to be this title. If I click here, I'll go to a page that has just the life as we know it material. There is the ability to jump to the next topic and the next topic, or there is a drop down menu here that will allow you to jump to any place in the course or back to the course main page. Okay. Just to, uh, let me go back into edit settings here and uh, change this back to all sections on one page. Then as we, as I added, uh, materials, resources, activities, they would all show up on the front page of Moodle within the appropriate section that I've added them into. Um, just to show you, I mean, we've got one other option installed that could be useful for courses. I know a lot of faculty like this one. It's the one topic format. And if you select that, then again, your course is focused around topics, but those topics then show up as, you know, a tab series across the top here. So students could go straight to topic 13 and they would see whatever resources and activities that had been listed. Now you have to be careful with either the one topic format or the one section per page because I was like a third of the way through the semester one time using this one topic format and realized that there were a handful of students in my course who didn't realize that there was anything beyond this first tab and they weren't actually watching or looking at what we were looking at in topic two and topic three. So um, just a little bit of a heads up there. Okay, so that's a really kind of basic decision you're going to want to make about your course. How do you want to organize your course in Moodle? Do you just want to display weeks of activities? Do you want to organize your course into units? How do you want to display those, those units? Um, as you are working on your course, uh, a couple of other things just to help you provide organization around your resources and activities so that you're, you know, making it easier for your students to understand what's going on in the course. So um, each section has a section title. And if you have editing turned on, you can edit those directly. So if I were going to go with the 
three unit organization I've used in the past. I could type in a title, Life as We Know It, and a title, you know, looking for life in our solar system. Hit return. And um, looking for life beyond our solar system. So that's kind of good. It kind of lets my students know, oh, the course is going to be broken up into these three units. And I kind of know what this first one is about. Well, I, or maybe I can guess what this first one about. Second one is clearly looking for life in our solar system. And the third one is looking for life beyond our solar system. But you can help your students out by providing actually a short little summary of what each of those weeks or topics are going to be. So if instead of just editing the title here directly, if you go over here to the edit menu and hit edit topic, you have again the ability to edit the section name. But you can also provide a short summary, you know, uh, life on Earth is the only um, life we know. What lessons about the search for life in, in the universe can we derive from looking at the history of life on Earth? You can um, you're basically editing Moodle text here. You have all of these tools. You can do uh, bulleted and numbered lists. You can do formatting. You can add images. You can uh, do different kinds of alignments, uh, other different kinds of formatting. Um, this is all pretty self-explanatory. If you've edited anything in a web browser before, you probably can uh, understand what most of these tools are all about. Click Save the Changes, and uh, then not only does this first unit have a title, but the students are seeing um, a, a brief, and in this case, garbagey description of what that section's about. Okay. So in general, um, I mean, even, even if you are setting your course on a weekly basis, you can use that section description, that weekly description, to give the students a short little, here's what we're going to do uh, this week. And certainly if you are setting up your Moodle course in terms of units, it's good practice to give them a description of what each of these units is about. Um, so, I mean, if we look at my geology course, uh, here we have foundations for geology. This material, okay, so here's the section name. And this is the material that I edited into the section, the topic description area. Now I have uh, worked with faculty where they essentially put everything, um, paragraphs and paragraphs and pages and pages of materials into the uh, section descriptions which again is really not the best way to, to handle things. So um, it's best just to, okay, here are the units and here's a brief little uh, description of what that unit is about. Um, I will just add, um, maybe I won't take the time to go through it. Well, yeah, if we look here, I actually have this unit broken up into um, an introduction to the course, development of the concept of deep time, measuring geological time, so kind of subtopics within, and I've got a whole bunch of items underneath there. These little pieces of text that I'm using to help organize stuff within this topic are called labels. And so if I click add an activity or resource here in this first unit, I can add a label.
And again, the label just provides you a place where you can, you know, first we're going to blah, 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 blah. And click save and return to course. This now becomes a little bit, bit of text that you can move around on the front page. Now it's more useful to have these pieces set up as label resources because um, you can actually organize uh, other resources and activities around them. So if this were part of the um, topic summary, it would have to be at the top of the page uh, of this section. But because I've added it as a label resource, again, it's a piece of text, but I can move those around. And um, I mean, this doesn't make any sense to have the folder of readings above the introduction to the tour uh, course um, uh, label resource, but it gives you more flexibility to add these little chunks of text in as as these label resources. Uh, so how are we doing? Okay. Um, I think I will skip over adding blocks to your course just to mention that uh, when you do have editing turned on, you will see this add a block block. And there are all sorts of blocks that are very useful additions to your course. You might want to add the people block. So you've got an easy way to uh, get to your participants list. You can add the activities block so that students can see all of the discussion forums, all of the quizzes, all the assignments uh, gathered together on one page and so forth. So you know, take some time to look through here, add some of these blocks. You can always um, just go ahead and delete the block from your page it's still there as an option for you to add later if you want to add it back you've just removed it from the page okay a couple of quick messages uh, points about messaging um, you have ba two basic options for handling messaging in uh, your course uh, there's course announcements if you are sending a broadcast message out to the whole class this is what you want to use. There is a whole separate messaging system in Moodle that allows you to do individual communications, um, either with one or a handful of students. And uh, it's really nice that that's now available through the participants list. So let me just show you a couple things about, uh, about this. So um, course announcements. By default, your course will have a course announcements discussion forum. This is a very specialized kind of discussion forum in that everyone is subscribed to get email notifications to anything that is posted here. And you are the only one who can post to this discussion forum. So you can basically post to the forum, the course announcements forum. It gets added as a, um, as a post on the forum but also gets emailed out. So if we go back over to my geology course and look at the uh, course announcements, all of these posts that are showing up here as items on the forum would have also been emailed out to everyone in my class. So I think the course announcements gives you the best of both worlds. Uh, students get an email notification of any announcements you put up here, but the announcement is also archived automatically in the course announcements forum. So if a student deletes your course announcements from their inbox, doesn't matter. Uh, they're not off the hook because they could always go back to the course announcements forum in your um, class to see what, um, what the announcements were. And so uh, it's a good idea to add the course announcements block. 
to go along with that course announcements forum. It gives you an option. You don't actually have to go into the forum here to create a new announcement. You can click add topic and uh, I could call it welcome to the course. Same kind of Moodle editor. And I'm definitely not going to email out this announcement to all of my students because, you know, my 60 students are enrolled here in Moodle. And even though the course is not open, you can actually use the course announcements forum to actually send out a broadcast email. You can put in attachments. Uh, you can set the uh, uh, announcement to go out immediately as soon as you hit post to the forum. One thing that a lot of faculty are maybe not aware of, you can actually schedule appointments, so uh, uh, announcements. So if I wanted this to go out on August 30th and I want to write it now, I could go ahead and write it now. Click Enable and um, change this to August, uh, August 31st. And if I hit post to forum, it would actually not be emailed out to my students until August 31st. Okay. So the course announcements is fairly straightforward. It is a specialized discussion forum. You're the only one who can post things there. Anything you post there gets emailed out to everyone in the course. And you can schedule when those go out. Um, I'm going to click cancel because I don't want to send this message out to my students. Um, and um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward doing course announcements. But there are some messages that you don't want to send out to everyone in the course. You may want to send out a message to one individual student or uh, a handful of students. Obviously, you could use your regular email for that. But as much as possible, I try to keep my course-related communications with students in Moodle because if they go into my inbox, uh, they're in with all the other crap that's in my inbox. And it's, um, I really discourage my students from actually directly emailing me. Uh, if you look at your participants list, uh, and maybe I should not do this in my course here, let me, let me go over to a sandbox course. Again, if I um, look at the participants, I can select sample student four or maybe sample student two, three, and four. I want to send out a message to the three of them here. Select them in the um, participants list that you would get from the people block here or from your course administration block under user. Enrolled users will take you to your participants list as well. Select the students you want to message. Click send them a message. Type in the message. It tells you this message is going out to three people. This is a little bit more limited. You don't have the whole sort of um, formatting tools. This is really for sending out quick kind of text-like messages. Tells you it's going to these three people and click send the message and it would go out through the Moodle messaging system. If the students actually in Moodle, depending on how they've set up their notifications, um, they might actually get a pop-up window directly in Moodle with your message and be able to reply right back. Otherwise, it would go out to their email. So we're just about at the end of the, our time. Um, again, uh, for those of you who are brand new to Moodle, Moodle front page is fairly um, stripped down and straightforward. There are some various links to resources there that. Um, you um, might find useful. Um, look at these various site pages. By default, Moodle courses are set up to mimic the weeks of a semester. Uh, 
In that way, I find Moodle to be a very natural kind of learning management system. Other uh, learning management systems, you actually have to kind of work to make things like in Blackboard, you'd have to add a folder for week one and then put stuff in it and a folder for week two and so forth. Whereas in Moodle, that kind of organization is the default. Can lead to this whole Moodle um, pay, uh, uh, scroll of death kind of situation if your front page gets too long, but you can do various, um, you know, you can break that up into topics and display those topics on different pages if you want and then use these labels and, and other tools to provide kind of organization around that. Um, Marie, let me ask at this point, I see there's a whole bunch of messages in the chat, but um, anything that I need to address in terms of questions that have come in or have you been dealing with them all? Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been dealing with what I can here. Um, nothing too significant regarding these sort of getting started concepts though. I don't okay. think unless anyone has anything else to, um, you know, if you want to ask now yeah. in the chat, now that Keith has a chance to glance at it. Uh, let me also say, uh, go ahead and put your type your name into the chat again. Just make sure I've got a, an intact list. Um, I will, as I pointed out, there are these activities in the Moodle Foundation Certificate. What I'd really like you to do, and we'll have a recording of this session as well if you want to come back to it, but what we've talked about, what I've talked about in the workshop today is really also covered in that Moodle Foundation Certificate course under those two sections. And so, um, you know, it's one thing for you to sit here and listen to me talk about these things, but ideally, I want you to start thinking about your fall 2020 course and how you might want to organize it and how you want to set up your communication tools. So I really would, uh, what I will, as I said, use um, these assignment activities and the Moodle Foundations course to give you a chance to do some work on your course, your fall courses, one of them or, or multiple, and then report back on that work in these activities. And that will give Marie and I a chance to go in and take a look and provide some feedback and check off that. Um, we'll, we'll use a check off of these activities to send you a um, Moodle badge for this workshop that you could then have for your records. And I'm going to stop screen sharing so I could see the chat better. And uh, yeah, we'll talk actually about embedding videos uh, tomorrow as part of the content. Um, There's a question about, um, is there anything like Google Docs in Moodle, a place where students can submit work and feedback that can be arranged in folders? We'll talk about folder resources tomorrow. And if you wanted to have a folder set up so that students could submit work, uh, you, it can be done. But normally, folders are places where faculty can upload and organize um, files into subfolders and, and files within there. But if you want to allow students to also um, upload, uh, then you just have to change the permissions on that folder uh, setting. And if, if you're at the workshop tomorrow and you raise the question, we can go over it again. Uh, in terms of recognizing, um, I'm, I mean, in terms of uploading the file so that they're there, probably, but in terms of incorporating them into a page, web page display, I'm not sure. We'd have to see what the editor, but there are actually a couple of different text editors that you can select in Google. Um, there's another question, Keith, about um, sort of like sample Moodle course spaces that can kind of be held up as examples of, you know, best practices and, you know, kind of models that folks can use for maybe inspiration or just what's the best way to kind of do things that they can mm -hmm. look at as a model. Right. We don't have a, a library of those. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if there would be any FERPA issues. I've, I, 
you, you'll see that I've got links to my geology and life in the universe class and so forth in the notes there, but I have not yet set up guest access. So if you clicked on those links, you wouldn't necessarily be able to get into them. Uh, let me see what guest access looks like. Um, I mean, I can only really provide access to some of my courses. I haven't put out a call to other faculty to say, hey, do you have a, a, a good Moodle course that you want to show off to your colleagues? But we, that's something we certainly could think about doing. And a um, question about sharing the Google Doc outlines that you have. Maybe um, we can put the links together in some sort of digest. I have sort of a running list of the sessions that have yeah. been offered, um, uh, as well as the recordings. I think they're on our, let me chat the uh, workshops link in our yeah. um, getting started guide, the Moodle basics guide. Um, and I'll add some of the, uh, those, um, these Google Doc out, um, notes right. outlined so folks yeah. can refer back to them. And for the five workshops this week, I'm just going to use the one Google Doc. So it'll be the same uh, bit.ly URL to get into any of them. Oh, OK, good. Yep. OK. Well, uh, hopefully this was an hour well spent. Again, for those of you who have uh, not been in Moodle before, I think it can be a very natural way for you to organize resources and activities for your students by default you know it has a weekly structure that maps onto the um, semester calendar but if you want to you know organize your course in terms of units instead because it makes more sense and gives you flexibility there are those options as well okay so I thank everyone for coming, and um, we'll maybe see a number of you at other uh, workshops uh, throughout the rest of this week. But again, look for, hopefully by Wednesday, I'll be ready to announce uh, these more, these, these workshops that are more focused on actually helping us think about ways we want to design our courses to be resilient and flexible for the fall whether we're teaching remotely or online or face-to-face. -face. Uh, also, the, the, work, the, the workshop we'll be going through would be useful if you were ever wanting to think about doing a flipped classroom approach or a blended course approach where you've got some face-to-face -face or Zoom meetings and some balance of asynchronous learning activities that are taking place online. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon and evening, everyone, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks, Keith. Yep, take care. Bye-bye, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.